Hi guys, so Boris Johnson and Keir Starmer, the leader of the opposition, clashed in Parliament on Wednesday. It was a very interesting discussion, so let's jump in and see what they talked about. How does an area which goes into Tier 3 restrictions get out of those restrictions? Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the uh, simplest and most effective way uh, for areas to get out of those restrictions is, of course, to get the R down uh, to uh, one or below. And I'm very pleased to say that uh, some areas uh, are already uh, having a considerable effect with the measures that they're taking. <laughs> they're having a considerable effect. Do you mean that they're getting the number, the R number down, or they're not? Boris Johnson has a, a habit of saying one thing and then adding information to it that doesn't clarify it. It just does the opposite. It makes it more confusing. But it allows him to say two things that are completely separate, but give the impression that they're connected. Yes, Tom. Mr Speaker, can I press the Prime Minister on that answer? Um, if the infection rate R in a Tier 3 area has not come below 1, will it be possible in any circumstances for that area to come out of Tier 3 if the R hasn't come below 1? Mr Speaker, obviously the uh, R is one of the measures that we look at and we'll take a decision based on uh, a, a number of things, including the R, but also, of course, uh, rates of infection, uh, rates of admission uh, to hospital and, and other data. But the most See, this is something I've been talking about before as well, that Boris Johnson and the government don't say what is the requirement to go into the tiers. He also doesn't give any example or any identification of what the criteria is to leave. So he's just saying if the R number gets below one and he's asked, OK, so when the R number gets below one, does that mean that they can leave? And he says, no, there's other criteria. Then what is that criteria? The important thing is for areas that uh, do go into tier three, and I, I'm very grateful to local leadership in the areas that, that have gone into to tier three because it's the right thing uh, for them to do, the right thing uh, for their constituents, the right thing uh, to save lives, uh, when uh, they're able to make progress, and of course they will come out of tier three. And uh, As he knows full well, the, the measures that uh, are put in place uh, are reviewed every 28 days. <laughs> Well, one of the things that Boris Johnson has said that, you know, we're, we don't want to impose a, lock, um, a lockdown or a circuit breaker is because it would close everything down for two weeks. But he's instead wanting to impose a tier three lockdown for 28 days, which is longer. Stop. Well, Mr. Speaker, I'm now confused by the Prime Minister's answer. If it's not the R rate under one, what is it? Because millions of people want to know the answer to that question because millions of them are in Tier 3 and millions more are likely to go into Tier 3. They really need to know. And Prime Minister, on Friday, the Chief Scientific Officer said Tier 3 on its own certainly isn't enough to get the R rate below 1. On the same day, the Prime Minister himself said there was only a... Why is he shaking his head? Why is Boris Johnson disagreeing with this? He was there. Boris Johnson was there when... The chief medical officer said the, getting um, the R number below, uh, below, no, sorry, he was talking about tier three, that tier three is not sufficient um, to reduce the spread. On its own, it's not sufficient. We need other measures too. Why is Boris Johnson shaking his head to this statement? He was there at the time. Chance of getting infection rates down. This goes to the heart of the issue in Greater Manchester and elsewhere. Because the widespread fear, Prime Minister, is that Tier 3 is the worst of all worlds. It brings significant economic harm without getting the virus sufficiently under control to exit Tier 3. So instead of being a solution, Tier 3 is a gateway to weeks and weeks, more likely months and months of agony, from which there's no likely exit. Can the Prime Minister not see the problem if there isn't a clear exit? Of course, he doesn't care about the X. And this is a very, very important point that's been brought up. When you have a lockdown, you can follow how the lockdown is working. You can see, OK, we've imposed a lockdown. Let's look at how the spread is being reduced. We're able to 
you know, flatten the curve. Remember that expression, to flatten the curve, to bring it right down. Matt Hancock was talking about bringing it all the way down. He <laughs> didn't give it, of course, a number. That would have been better, but to bring it as down as, you know, in some countries, they wouldn't ease the lockdown until they had a number of weeks with no new cases. That was a good barometer to use. Okay, 20, uh, what was it, seven, seven days without new cases or seven days without any deaths, then we can ease the lockdown. That is a good measure to use. Something that we can all look at, we can all see, we can see if we're progressing, we can see if we're failing. The, the problem with tier three is, Boris Johnson says, once we get the R number down, that's part of easing the tier three, but it's not all of it. But he won't tell Parliament what the other information is. How are people supposed to know if they're succeeding if they don't know what the end goal is? Uh, sorry, Mr. Speaker, I, I've made it absolutely clear that a <laughs> clear as mud. <laughs> Uh, tier, uh, part of the country going into Tier 3 uh, is only in there for 28 days. We will review it after 28 days. Okay, yes, you will review it after 28 days. 28 days is a month, but more or less. Like, why is Boris Johnson so against a two-week circuit breaker, which I don't think is sufficient, but he's against a two-week circuit breaker, but he's not against a 28-day th Tier 3 restriction and uh, areas that uh, have gone into Tier 3, uh, I, I believe, are already making progress, and areas where there are restrictions in place are also showing signs of progress. We are pursuing, Mr Speaker, a local, a regional approach, which is the... Okay, but that's not answering the question. The, what is the other criteria? You, you mentioned the R number. What is the other criteria in order to leave Tier 3? sensible approach uh, for this country. That's what the epidemiology supports. It's what the Deputy Chief Medical Officer uh, supported uh, last night. And again, I want to thank a local leadership in Merseyside. In Once again, Boris, John Boris Johnson is avoiding the question. Why are you not answering the question? I, do people not deserve to know what the criteria is to leave Tier 3? Maybe Boris Johnson doesn't understand. He doesn't know what the criteria is. How can he impose a restriction upon a part of the country when he doesn't know how to leave that restriction? This is insanity. Lancashire, actually in London and West Midlands and elsewhere for what they are doing. And I may say that it is a bit incoherent of the... Uh, the uh... And now we're back to the usual attack, the, the questioner. You know, Keir Starmer didn't insult you. He didn't ask you a question that was beyond reason. He wasn't trying to ask you gotcha questions, you know, to try to tri trick you and cause you to trip yourself up. It was a legitimate question. You said that the R number is what uh, needs to be reduced in order to leave Tier 3. Keir Starmer asked, is there anything else? And you said, yes, there are other uh, factors. He said, what are those factors? And now you're um, insulting him, basically, for asking that question. Uh, right, honourable gentleman, opposite. To attack uh, local lockdowns when he wants to plunge the whole country, uh, to, the whole country, back into... What is the point of all of this? Once again, I, I know I'm going over old ground here, but why is there no one intervening here and saying, Prime Minister, that wasn't the question? Please answer the question. What is the point of having the Speaker of the House if they don't intervene and say they don't moderate this discussion? I I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Prime Minister, <laughs> you are asked this question. Can you please answer that question? To a damaging lockdown uh, for weeks on end, and he has no clue about how he would propose to get the country out of that, does he? <laughs> He's not the Prime Minister, you friggin' idiot. <laughs> Why are you asking the, the leader of the opposition to <laughs> explain what he would do when he's not the prime minister? That's your job. This is, once again, the typical tricks of let's ask questions of the, the opposition, it, but they're, they're not in a position to respond because they, their job is to hold you to account, not for you to hold them to account. They're not the government. I know 
for for Tories and and their supporters, they probably lap this up. They think, oh, look at Boris Johnson asking him these questions. That's not Boris Johnson's job. Boris Johnson's job is to respond to questions, not to ask questions. Like, you may disagree with me, but that's the rules. That's what he's supposed to do. He's the government. He's the one being held to account. He shouldn't be asking questions of Keir Starmer because it's not his business. His business is to answer questions. I know it's nice for political theatre. It looks good. It sounds good. It's funny in some, in some situations. But it's not the, the, what should be going on. Keir Starmer. Mr Speaker, I appreciate there's going to be a review every 28 days, but if the R8 hasn't come below one, then the infection rate is still going up. And the numbers are going up. And the admissions are going up. And the numbers in hospital are going up, and the deaths are going up. Is the Prime Minister seriously saying that he would take a Tier 3 area out of Tier 3 with the R above 1? I don't think so. Let me spell out what this means. Let me spell out what this means. <laughs> Boris is incapable of actually looking at someone and agreeing or disagreeing with them. He, he's, looking, he's looking down because he knows he, he has no response to this. You know, he's like the child who has, you know, told the teacher, I forgot to do my homework. Or they said, yes, I have studied for the exam or the test. And now they're being asked to explain themselves and they, they're not able to explain themselves. So they just look down at your feet. Maybe he'll find his answers on his feet, on his shoes. I don't know. Um, but once again, it, these are legitimate questions. Boris Johnson must be responding to them. On Friday, thousands of people in Greater Manchester, taxi drivers, pub and hospitality workers, people working in betting shops, the self-employed and freelancers, will either be out of work or face significant pay cuts. That's the reality on Friday in Greater Manchester. But their rent and their mortgage won't be lower, their food and their heating bills won't be lower, and that could last for months. Why can't the Prime Minister and the Chancellor understand this? Stop bargaining with people's lives. Stop dividing communities and provide the support that's needed in Manchester. Well, what he's referring to here is the, that has been presented by many leaders in local areas that are being asked to go into lockdown. Um, they have been strong-armed into accepting particular conditions. Now, there was, a, I think it was a mayor in Sheffield who was interviewed by Sky News today. And he didn't actually say he was strong armed. He just said, well, yeah, I did what I was told, basically. <laughs> um, like the government are basically saying, here's the package, take it or leave it. We can negotiate some, something around the edges. But at the end of the day, it's, it, this is what's on the table. If you don't want it, then we're going to enforce uh, our lockdown and our, sorry, our uh, restrictions. And we'll, get, and we'll pay, we'll provide whatever resources we think are necessary. Now, the only uh, area that, res that resisted this was Greater Manchester. And they are taking, you know, the stick for that. They are receiving all the, all the wrath that the Conservative Party can muster. Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm, I'm very proud that this government has already given Greater Manchester £1.1 billion in, in, in support for business. Uh, 200 million pounds in extra and now what they do is they just rattle off numbers that mean absolutely nothing um, because is it working Boris Johnson could say we're spending a trillion pounds <laughs> in Greater Manchester but it, it doesn't make any difference unless it's working you know if Greater Manchester was, were receiving the money that they needed then why would they be asking for more why would they be saying we cannot survive on this if they have sufficient money, as Boris Johnson is is uh, saying that they do have in Parliament. Unring fenced funding of fifty million pounds uh, to tackle infections in care homes, twenty million for tests and trace, another twenty-two million for local response. The the objective of the, sorry the the goal of this you know rattling off numbers is because it sounds good. The public have no understanding what £20 million looks like. They know it's a big number. But when you spread it across an entire city, then you realise how big of a number it is. It makes more sense to say we're spending this amount of money per citizen 
For example, we're spending a thousand pounds per citizen or something like that. That would be a much better uh, statistic to use. Instead of saying we're spending a hundred million here and a billion here and um, 50,000 here and uh, 100 million over five years, and it, this means nothing to the average people on the street. They understand, am I going to be better off or am I, am I not going to be better off? that we announced yesterday. And yesterday, the mayor of Greater Manchester was offered a further £60 million, which he turned down, Mr Speaker, with no encouragement, I may say, to support from the right honourable gentleman. So I can tell... So attack Keir Starmer over this. ...the House today, Mr Speaker, is that that cash will be distributed uh, to the boroughs of Greater Manchester. And I want to thank uh, my honourable and right honourable colleagues across the, the House uh, for Haywood and Milton, Middleton, for Bo from Bolton North West, from Bolton North, North West. So this is an attempt to divide and conquer. So separate Greater Manchester from the others. These ones capitulated. These ones gave in and they said, yes, we will do as we're told. Greater Manchester didn't. So let's... Uh, thank the ones who have capitulated and let's attack the one that did not. Northeast, from Berry South, Berry North, Cheadle, Lee, Orchardham and Sale West and Hazel Grove for the support that they have given in this matter, Mr Speaker. This is a, this is a Prime Minister that can pay £7,000 a day for consultants on truck and trade, which isn't working, that can find £43 million for a garden bridge that was never built, <laughs> but he can't find £5 million for the people of Greater Manchester. I really think the Prime Minister's crossed a Rubicon here, not just with the miserly way that he's treated Greater Manchester, but the grub it, take it or leave it way these local deals are being done. It's corrosive to public trust to pit region against region, mayor against mayor, council against council, asking them to trade away their businesses and jobs. We need a one-nation approach replace these endless lo local battles with clear national criteria and proper support for jobs. Labour's motion this afternoon would do that. Why won't the Prime Minister support it? Uh, Mr Speaker, I'm proud of the support that we've given, the One Nation Conservative support that we've given uh, to, the, to the entire country. Uh, £200 billion in support for jobs and livelihoods across... OK, but the, well, once again, he's just rattling off numbers that mean nothing to people. People are suffering. Talking about we spend £200 billion on uh, universal credit or on businesses or whatever, it means nothing to people if they are suffering. This is the disconnect. Across the whole of the country already, a further £9.9 .9 billion now for the job support scheme. Uh, it is this government that has cut VAT for, for business, deferred business rates. There is no other country in Europe, Mr Speaker, where so much support, so much help has been given. Then why are things going to shit? <laughs> like Boris Johnson is saying, we are doing the most, we are doing the best, we are doing everything great. Then why are people suffering? How, how do you square that, Boris? I wish I was there. I would say, M M Prime Minister, if everything is going so great, as you say, then why are people suffering? Can you please answer that question, please? This, this is just distraction. Look at these big flashy numbers, big shiny numbers I have in front of you. Look at those numbers. Don't look at down. Don't look at what's right in front of you. Don't look at your current situation to the population to get through this crisis and we will continue to do that but I think it is the height of absurdity Mr Speaker that he stands up and attacks the economic consequences of the measures that we're obliged to take across some parts of the country when he wants to turn the lights out with a full national lockdown taking kids take, that was his policy last week anyway wasn't it perhaps he could confirm that's still his policy is that what he wants to do yes. <laughs> okay so the problem with a tier three, what Boris Johnson is imposing on the country at the moment, the tier three, which isn't actually supported um, by Chris Whitty, because Chris Whitty has said that it's not enough. It's not enough to get the numbers down. Boris Johnson has said that uh, to exit the tier three restrictions, you need to have the R number down and something else. Now, he hasn't explained what that something else is, but it's something else else in the ether 
maybe he'll he'll come up he'll you know he'll come up with an idea someday or maybe it's a secret <laughs> he doesn't want to give it away you know dominic cummins told him you don't tell the public everything keep something in reserve now the problem with that is that it's a half arsed measure it's not, it's a half measure it doesn't go far enough and these are not my words these are chris witty's words while a full lockdown or a circuit breaker or whatever you want to call it it's a full um, it's a full measure. You, clo you close down the country for two weeks or a month and then you're able to see the results. The spread decreases. You flatten the curve. You get the numbers right down. You get them down to a stage where you, know, you have no new cases or you have no new deaths for, let's say, seven days. And then you ease the lockdown. You come out. And then you monitor the situation. And if you see a spread uh, appearing in one part of the country, you attack it aggressively. You lock down that area. You impose test and trace. You, tr you trace as many people as possible, as quickly as possible. You get rid of Serco. You put in N the NHS. You get them to do it, not Serco to do it, because they're incompetent. That's how you deal with it. And you continually work in, in that way until uh, until it's necessary to impose another lockdown. You don't take a lockdown off the table. It's a very powerful tool. It's a cudgel, perhaps, for in some people's minds. But it has worked. Use tools that work. Boris Johnson is attempting to use tools that don't work. And he's criticising people who are talking about using tools that do work. Starmer. Mr Speaker, on his press conference yesterday, the Prime Minister produced heat maps across the country showing the infection rate up in all ages across all regions, and particularly showing regions that have been in the equivalent of Tier 2 restrictions for weeks, if not months, moving into Tier 3. Now, if they're moving into Tier 3, Tier 2 hasn't worked, because if Tier 2 worked, they should be going to Tier 1. So very good, very good point. If, you know, if tier two is working, then, you know, the population should be moving into tier one. It should be, you impose tier three, you move down into tier two, then tier one, and then, you're, then you leave the tier altogether. But that's not how it seems to be working. What seems to be happening instead, sorry, seems to be happening. What seems to be happening instead is that populations are going into tier two or tier one, and then they're moving up the scale, not down the scale. Tier 2 goes to Tier 3. Tier 3 has no end because there's no prospect or confidence in the R rate coming below 1. And I do not believe that the Tier 3 region will come out of those restrictions unless R is below 1 and whilst numbers are still going up. So we now have a stark choice. And by the way, Prime Minister, Cornwall is the only place, possibly with the Isle of Wight, where the infection rate today is less than Greater Manchester when it went into local restrictions. So this idea that some areas are immune is wrong. So there's a stark choice. Carry on with the Prime Minister's approach, which will lead to weeks and weeks and months and months of prolonged agony in all your constituencies yeah. for millions of people in Tier 2 and 3 with no exit yes. or place or put in place a two to three week time limited circuit break to break the cycle and bring the virus back under control. Whale. And he's correct. Like, I know it's not uh, palatable. But you can't argue that it's not correct because we have seen it work. We have seen how a lock... Boris Johnson imposed a lockdown at the beginning of the year and it worked. He even said it himself. The lockdown has worked. Now the numbers are down. Now we're going to ease the lockdown. How does Boris Johnson, you know, how does he get away with saying that a lockdown doesn't work? Maybe Keir Starmer should stop calling it a circuit breaker, just call it a lockdown. Lockdown like you imposed before. Why are you against imposing another lockdown that you imposed in the beginning? That worked. Wales, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland in part have chosen that path. With half term starting this Friday, this may be the last opportunity for the Prime Minister to put in place an effective circuit break. The Prime Minister was too slow in the first phase of this pandemic. He's being too slow again. We cannot repeat this mistake. 
Will he act in the public interest and take the opportunity to put in place a circuit break this Friday? Uh, Mr Speaker, we will do whatever it takes to get the... <laughs> so he's being very careful here. We will do whatever it takes. So he's not taking a circuit breaker off the table because he knows that if he, if he does uh, and then he imposes one later, he will be attacked over this. So what he's doing is he's leaving his options open, but he will attack the opposition for, for suggesting a circuit breaker. This is the horrible theatre that takes place in politics. What you do is, as for example, what Boris Johnson is doing, is he will attack the opposition for suggesting something that he knows and the opposition know he will he will do later on. Boris Johnson will impose a lockdown at some stage. Um, he has to. He can't continue in this way. The tier tier three is not working. If uh, you have uh, parts of the population in tier two moving into tier three. This is a disaster. He will have to impose a lockdown. Now, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But what Boris Johnson is trying to do here is trying to buy time, in, you know, trying to buy political time for himself, trying to create a situation where he's in control, he's dictating terms. In, rea in reality, what he's doing is he's fighting the virus. He's not fighting the opposition. He thinks he's fighting the opposition, but he's fighting the virus. And the virus is winning. Now, he could, as I said before, stop it in its tracks with a lockdown. But he's not going to do that at this stage because he's afraid. Because he's afraid he's going to be seen as not doing the right thing, but in his eyes and his backbencher's eyes, as in following the lead from the opposition, because Keir Starmer has suggested it. Keir Starmer is doing the right thing from a political point of view. I think he's doing the right thing also from an ethical point of view, from a scientific point of view, impose a lockdown. But from a political point of view, he's suggesting something that he knows Boris Johnson cannot do <laughs> politically, because they, it will, he will be seen as impotent. He, he's, he's, he's following Scotland, he's following Northern Ireland, he's following Wales, he's following the opposition. What is the point in, in having a prime minister like this? Boris Johnson is trying to protect himself. And unfortunately, he's putting the lives of British people in the firing line. His country through the crisis, uh, with or without the support of the uh, right honourable gentleman opposite. And I, I may say that I think that his policy, I've explained why I don't believe that his policy is the right one for the country, because it would involve closing schools, it would involve shuttering businesses, it would, with all the psychological, the emotional damage that lockdown of that kind brings. Uh, he can't say uh, how many circuit breakers he thinks uh, would be necessary. He but he's not the government. It's not his job to tell you how many circuit breakers he would suggest because he can, he doesn't have the power to impose them. He could say, we'll do only one, but it would be irrelevant because he's not the government. Once again, Boris Johnson is playing this game. You know, it's good for the audience. It's good for people watching. Oh, yeah, look at Boris. Boris is asking in, how many would you do? How many he would do is irrelevant because he's not the government. We need to stop. People need to take a step back and realize what Boris Johnson is doing here. He's playing a game. He's trying to trick people into thinking that this is, you know, two parties who are fighting over power. No, they're not. Boris Johnson has the power. He's been he's been held accountable for it. He can't say how long they would go on. He can't say how much damage they would do to the UK economy and to people's mental health. Mr. Speaker, we, we, on the other hand, want to go on with our commonsensical approach, which is a local and a regional approach, keeping kids in school, keeping our economy moving, because that is the way to get the whole of our country, the whole of our country, through this crisis together, so that we all, and particularly those regions that are now, alas, under Tier 3 restrictions, all the regions of the country bounce back strongly together, Mr. Speaker. And this is pretty much it. So, like... As I've said before, there needs to be a lockdown. Boris Johnson is probably going to, to do a lockdown at some stage. Um, there's an opportunity to do it now. Um, so you actually cover the, the midterm break so that students, uh, kids are staying at home anyway. So you don't need to close the schools in an extra sense. 
um, the kids will already be at home. That would this would be a good time to do it. A quick two week circuit breaker to see uh, if you can get the the numbers down. But Boris Johnson suggesting that yeah you you know he can't say how many circuit breakers there will be. There will be how many is necessary. Attacking Keir Starmer or the idea of well if you impose a circuit breaker you probably need to do another one sometime after. Yeah, but that's irrelevant. You do what is what is necessary. It's like saying, you know, we fought a battle, now we can go away. No, the war is not over. You don't fight a battle and then just walk away. You prepare for the next battle. That's what you do with the circuit breaker. That's the one of the benefits of the circuit breaker. It gives you time to prepare for the next battle. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think about this analysis. Um, as always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot. I want to say a big, big thank you to all of my patrons. You ensure that this channel continues to exist. I'm eternally grateful for all of your support. If you join Patreon, you will receive instant access to our Discord server, where we have both audio and video chats. You can chat with me and other patrons, where we discuss important and non-important issues. Becoming a patron per month costs about the same as a large coffee, so why not check it out?